Hi my lovelies, welcome back to my channel. I love having you back here. If you happen to be new, hello, I'm Stephanie. I'm a language enthusiast and I make videos on the topic of how to learn languages better and more efficiently, with more fun, etc. In today's video, I want to discuss the importance of language learning breaks and why I think they're crucial. So if you're interested to know more, just keep on watching. When it comes to taking a break in language learning, I think it's extremely important to do so. I kind of stumbled upon breaks by accident, so I didn't really have them at school because I went to this high school that focused a lot on languages, what's called language high school here in Bulgaria. So what I did was that we had so many classes, so many classes of language instruction, mostly in English, a little bit in German. and. You know that I'm not a great fan of the ways that languages are traditionally taught at schools, but then also my point here is that they didn't really give us any breaks. So even when they, we would have like a, you know, a holiday or maybe like a big break in summer or winter or anything like that, we would never get time off really. It would always be, you know, here's some reading that you need to do when you're on your vacation, etc. So it would always be a lot of work. There would never be any breaks. And I think that's detrimental now, now that I understand better and now that I have experimented a lot with languages. But, you know, back then I didn't know it. Um, if you know my story, you know that it was Spanish that helped me discover how to learn language by yourself because it wasn't really offered in my high school and I really wanted to study it. And then, you know, I studied a lot of other languages and I have seen what a difference a break makes. And now I'm all about breaks. In this video, I want to give you my personal experience because there's just a lot that I don't understand when it comes to the neuroscience behind it, for example. And I am going to make a video, by the way, on the neuroscience of language learning in the future. I've researched quite a lot when it comes to the topic, but mostly about like brain changes and stuff like that. So it's not really about the importance of breaks. I don't think there's a lot of scientific literature out there on the topic, but do let me know if you have it in the context of language learning. But in the context of exercise, which is admittedly a topic I know very little, close to nothing about, but still, on the topic of exercise, I think it's common knowledge and most of us just know that there's this concept of rest days at the gym and you know a lot of trainers and people like that will tell you that you need a rest day because you can't just work out every single day and expect results, muscles need to rest in order to rebuild the torn muscle basically, as far as I know that's what it is. I think it's very similar in language learning, as I said, it's not like I can point you to any studies on that particular topic. Again, in the future, I'll point you to studies in language learning on other topics that I've researched, but when it comes to breaks, um, I've just, I'll speak from my own experience. Just take it with a grain of salt. But I do believe in breaks quite a lot, and I've seen it work for many other people as well. Um, let me tell you a personal story, actually, when it comes to that. So, if you are not new to my channel, then you might know that I lived in Spain for a year, and when I first went to Spain, I would say that I had a high intermediate level of Spanish, almost advanced, but probably advanced actually, I'm not sure, I can't really exactly place it, I was never great with like these placements and stuff, I'm not a fan of um, frameworks for languages and stuff like that, so I'm not gonna rate myself, I'm just gonna say I was quite advanced but not fluent yet, and so for me, it's, I needed to improve my Spanish a little bit to be able to use it perfectly, um, comfortably in it at work. And I was using it all the time at work, so at the end of the day, it's not like I had a choice, but you know, I was using it so much and sometimes because it was a consulting job and I had very long hours and you know, when it comes to late at night, my brain would get tired and my Spanish would be like, <laughs> you know, it, it was just hard. It was much easier to use it in the morning, in the afternoon, but then when it came to like late at night, it was just so hard to use. But anyways, I was using it all of the time. There was like no break, you know, using so much Spanish. And then I came back to my home country of Bulgaria for, um, you know, the holidays. So I was not using Spanish for several weeks. I had zero Spanish practice, like none, none whatsoever. I didn't use the language at all. I was not actively studying languages. I was just doing nothing but enjoying my time with my family and, you know, no language learning, no Spanish. And when I came back to Spain, I was surprised. I was like, my Spanish had just skyrocketed. I was like practically fluent. It was insane. And I had done no work. And I started thinking about it. And I was like, why is that the case? And to be honest, it was just wonderful for me because it pushes like this accident, this really happy accident. And I don't know how it happens. Um, but yeah, when I came back, I was just speaking 
like much much better Spanish and, and I was very surprised how that happened and I think there's something to be said about a lot of exposure you know I'm a firm believer a huge believer in a lot of exposure and immersing yourself in the language and getting a lot of comprehensible input but there comes a point where you need to let your brain sort it out in a way and that's what I think my brain did when I was you know in Bulgaria for the holidays it was just kind of ordering the language, you know, brick by brick, um, and just kind of rearranging it in my head and just like making sense of patterns and just, there's a lot of processes that are happening in the background that you're not realizing when you're studying a language. There's just a lot of subconscious processing. You know, that's what comprehensive input is all about, like a lot of subconscious processing that happens so that you can understand that input that you find interesting. And so I think even when you're not actively engaging with that input, your brain is still going on and just kind of picking up the language, solidifying it in your head and rearranging it and making sure you're able to use it. Sometimes you really need that break, just like in the gym, you kind of, you need to let your muscles rest so they can recuperate. So I think it's very similar because a lot of the times when you have just immersed yourself so much, you kind of need to take a step back and let your brain do the work in the background. And so this is very important to do. Um, it's very hard to know when, and so that is a question that might be going through your head right now, like when do you know when you should take a break? And the reason I'm saying it's hard to know is not because it's hard if you know yourself as a learner, but it's hard for me to give advice. <laughs> it's hard for me to give a blanket statement that like works for everybody because everybody's different in this regard. So it's really about, I'm so sorry to say this, when you feel like you need a break. And a lot of the times it can be hard to tell what, am I just lazy or do I actually need a break or like, you know, any of those things. But you know, if you're not feeling like studying, you might as well not study because then what's the point? You know, a lot of times when you have this desire to study, especially if you're studying a language that nobody's making you, you know, do it, you're just doing it because you want to, well then wait until you have like a little bit of motivation, I'd say take a break. So I think most of the time you can afford to do that, but at the end of the day, you know, when you feel like it's a bit too much, like your brain is a bit too tired, you're feeling low on energy, that's when I think it's a very good time to take a break. And what does that mean? Does it mean one week? Does it mean a couple of weeks? Does it mean a month? Yeah, I think that it really depends at what level you are. I have spoken in other videos, you know, about the importance of repeating languages, how some of us you know, we find that when we reach a certain level, we kind of don't have to worry about the language and it's always going to be there and we can go back to it whenever we want to. Others, you know, you don't practice it, you forget it. So it's very important to figure out which person you are um, and, you know, how long of breaks you can afford because sometimes maybe you get bored and you might want to leave it for a year. But at the end of the day, most of the times, breaks are going to be, you know, days or weeks stops. I think, like, especially if you're prone to losing a language, a month should be the maximum of a break you take, but in any case, just go for what you feel. I think that a few days or a few weeks are enough. They're really enough. Um, you can do more if you want to explore other languages, etc. If you know you're not going to lose a language, fine. But for the purposes of this video, let's say you take a few days or a few weeks off a language. Then that's going to allow your brain to kind of catch up with that language and make sure you're able to use it. And I know it sounds weird, but trust me, for some reason, it really, there's just so much benefit to it. You, of course, there's that benefit where you come back with more motivation, you come back, you know, more eager to learn the language, yes, clearly. But then there's also that rearranging in the brain that I said that happens, and that is just wonderful in how much you improve by doing nothing. And if you feel like you've hit this plateau with your language learning, you can uh, take my suggestions from my intermediate plateau video and try those, or you can also, and actually this is one of the suggestions in there as well, just take a break. Sometimes when you just take a break, you'll see that you kind of go past that plateau because you let your brain absorb everything that you've learned. So yeah, when should you do it? Like whatever you feel like you're kind of low on energy and you've kind of hit a brick wall and you're just like going and going and going, but at the end of the day, you really, it's hard for you because you really feel like you don't have that much energy. You really feel like your brain is overwhelmed with the language. Overwhelm is a great, um, great way to describe this feeling, that's when you should take a break. And then of course also if you want to take a break to explore other languages you can do that. Which leads me to my next point. Taking a break doesn't mean no language study. So if you're somebody that's like maybe you want to become a polyglot or something, maybe you're studying many languages and you're like I don't want to stop language learning, <laughs> uh, well then yeah I understand. In that case you can actually just leave that language to the side and learn another language. 
If you see my videos, you know I'm a firm believer in learning multiple languages at the same time. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think, you know, you don't have to do it, but if you want to do it, you have my blessing. <laughs> um, it's not, it's nothing bad, you know, it's not the villain that many people in the polyglot community say that it is. No, it's amazing. At the end of the day, if you are on a break from one language, you can learn others. And you're still gonna reap the benefits of that break because you know you're learning other languages so that language that you're kind of living alone is again you know advancing and kind of working behind the scenes so whenever you feel like you need a break from a certain language you can either learn no languages at all or you can learn other languages both are fine it depends on how you you know what you feel like what you want to do whether you have enough energy etc so feel free to either do nothing or to substitute with another language and I feel like that's one of the big benefits of learning multiple languages at the same time because you can give yourself breaks but then not leave language learning altogether. Not that there's anything wrong with leaving language learning altogether, that's what I've done um, recently. I mean, I feel like I've learned very little because I've done some language learning but much much less than before. And you know, that's normal. I have moved, I, you know, clearly you see my background is different. Uh, you know, I had a lot of changes happen, you know, in many aspects, personal, professional life, just a lot of stuff going on right now. And I'm so overwhelmed. It's not like I don't have the time for language learning. I feel like we always have the time. I just don't have as much energy. So it's not like I'm on a break, but I am like very light on language learning right now. And now I want to pick it up again and, you know, um, just make sure I hit my goals that I because I really love language learning and I want to get back on uh, on track. But at the end of the day, right now I'm on, I'm on something that's resembling a break, not exactly, but almost. So that's how I was inspired to make this video. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you know you know the scientific research behind it. You know I don't know what it is, but I can swear by taking a break. It, it's amazing. Anyways, um, yeah, if you're interested to know more, if I missed anything, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. As always, I always am here to answer any questions, be it in the comments or just by making videos about those questions. Uh, so do let me know. And if you like this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Um, this truly helps me as a creator. And if you want, you can ring the notification bell because that's gonna notify you when I have my next video coming up. Um, speaking of my next video, I will see you then. And until then, have a great one. Bye-bye.